small company called WebSafe Hearts to do with IT training and security. I'm going to talk very briefly about fundamentals of data protection. Now, is this you? There you are. Somebody's asking you for some information about one of your customers. You're not sure if you should give it. Um, is it going to possibly hurt them? Is it going to have any comeback on you? So you really need to think about that. And there are basically eight principles, just eight principles to do with data protection. Firstly, whatever information you hold about people, it must be fairly, it must be legally <coughs> processed. Um, and also processed, as I say, for limited pro purposes, just what you need the information for and nothing else. There's sort of creep, if you like, because, oh, I know this information, I can just use it for this, which is slightly outside my <coughs> remit, but never mind, um, and it has to be adequate, so you need enough information to do your processing, it needs to be relevant and not excessive. So, if you just need names and addresses and other contact details about somebody, you're not really supposed to ask them whether they're married, whether they're gay, or all sorts of other things like that that are not useful for your purposes. Um, also, very important this one, accurate and up to date. I'm still getting mail shots for a previous business that I had that closed about five or six years ago now, and people don't really seem to accept that it's no longer in existence. Um, so, and also, don't keep information for longer than you need it. If one of your customers stops being a customer after a few months, if you're sure they're not coming back, you remove their, their data because it's not relevant to you anymore. Um, again, processed in line with the sub data subject's rights. So, bear in mind somebody has a right to see the information you hold about them. And if it's wrong, correct it. Um, and personal information must be secure. Now, if it's on paper, this is something like in a locked filing cabinet. If it's in a database or Word documents or <coughs> spreadsheets, ideally they need to be encrypted. Um, it can be as simple as using BitLocker on your PC to encrypt your hard drive, um, but it certainly does need to be kept safe and not to be transferred to other countries without <coughs> adequate protection. So. I'm sure we all know countries where they might not be quite so good at data protection as we are. Um, so we're just briefly moving on. Personal information, I say names and addresses, phone numbers, email addresses, contacts, things like that. Sensitive, quite obvious. Who's your next of kin? Health information. Have you got a criminal record? Are you, a, are you an alcoholic? Are you addicted to other substances? What's your religious affiliation now? Bearing in mind the events in Paris in the last couple of days, a religious um, affiliation can have a profound impact. Whether that's justified or not, I'm not here to talk about, but it's just something to be aware of. And sometimes, it's not always obvious whether it's personal or sensitive. Uh, it's probably better just to treat it as though it was sensitive, just be a bit more careful about it. Now, examples of data breaches and penalties. Now, the Information Commissioner's Office, they're a bit like HMRC. They can arbitrarily issue fines. They don't need to go through any legal processes. They don't need the courts. They can say, you've done something wrong, we're going to fine you. <coughs> and I say, here, the Sony one, they're um, fined a quarter of a million. That was a serious data protection breach. It's when somebody got hold of a load of credit card information about, play, about um, PlayStation customers. March, Kent Police were fined 100,000 over documents, tapes. This was when they closed the police station but left everything, all the documentation behind in a basement. The guy who <coughs> bought the um, building to um, redevelop it found all this stuff, criminal data, and passed it on to the ICO and they got a fine. And the other one, was, the big one, was Brighton and Sussex University Hospital. They got rid of some computers. Some of the hard drives turned up on eBay. Somebody bought one and found a load of patient records on it. That's how they got a £260,000 fine. Now, where to go to for advice? Information <coughs> Commissioner's Office. There's their contact details. They do offer a free... Uh, one day advice session with businesses if you're concerned about data protection they'll send somebody down go through all your processes 
what you're doing and tell you on how to keep on the right side of the law. Registration only costs £50 a year, so it's well worth it if you're at all worried. Um, and even if you're exempt, which some charities are, it's probably worth it to register for the extra sort of help and advice you can get. And that's me whistled through it. <laughs>